Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. So if you watched the last episode, you saw that I showed you guys the script to open a file. Check that video out if you haven't. And one of the things I mentioned is that you can use it to open images. There is, however, one better way of opening images if you do have the SWS extensions installed, which I wanted to show you today. And that's using the resources window, which you can access by going to extensions and then coming down to resources to open this window here. Then from here, you click on this drop down menu and you select images and you're here. Here. And as you can see, I already have some images on here that I use for various things. And I can open an image from here. So I can just double click on this image and it'll open this image for me. The upside of using this is that I can, you know, stretch this to fit. I can also dock this anywhere I want and then I can refer to it. So let's say I'm mixing vocals. I found this vocal cheat sheet. I can just come and refer to this and it's much easier than using the Locasana create script to open a file to open an image because then you have to kind of tab back and forth between the image you want to see and Reaper. You can also save track icons to this, which is another really cool system. So I'll show you how that works. For example, something that I showed really early on in my tutorials is that I don't like it when I freeze a track that it just looks like an audio track with locked items. I wanted there to be an indication that a track is frozen. So I made a cycle action. Again, check that video if you haven't. But when I hit the cycle action, it starts to freeze my track. And then once the track is frozen, another thing that it'll do is that it will add this little icon next to the track so that I know that this is a frozen track and it looks different than if this icon wasn't here, this just looks like a regular audio track. So that's another thing that I put in my resource window, which I also have in my toolbar. So there's a command for that if you want to do, it's called open slash close resources window. So I hit it and I get this little window here. And again, this window itself is dockable as well if you need to dock it. So let's do that as well. And now it's docked over here. I have my freeze icon on this top track and in my cycle actions I have these two commands freeze to stereo mono track and as you can see it uses the command resources set track icon for selected tracks slot one place an image of this snowflake <laughs> in my resources path and then I can use these commands to open it set track icon for selected track slot one so if you have some track icons that you like to put on some tracks that's another use for the image tab in your resources window and now let me show you how to add your own image to this so what I gotta do I have right now seven slots I can right click on this empty space go add slot and then I can go load slot file and then let's say this time let's import my automation cheat sheet which you may have downloaded if you watch my automation series and let's say you're trying to learn the differences between automation modes as you're mixing and you need this as some kind of a reminder so I navigate to the place in my directory where the image is on and I hit open and now it's on a slot and when I bring this back right now it's a show image so if I just double click it now we can see that my cheat sheet is right here so as I'm doing automation if I'm not sure what's what I can quickly refer to it another thing you can do is you can tell it what to do if you double click on an image so you can use it to show the image you can use it to set as icon for selected tracks so that's another way of quickly adding a bunch of icons to your tracks if that's what you do I only use the freeze icon because otherwise icons they're definitely cool and cute but they take up screen real estate so I try not to use them too much or you can add it to the current track as an image and that works too because for example when I make these tutorials I have you know the start banner that you see at the beginning of videos and stuff like that here and I can just double click and then add them to the current track so you can access these images by going to the resource window and double clicking or alternatively you can just use one of these so I can show images slot one to four or I can for example show image slot slot one and then go and show previous image to get here. So I can also make this a little custom action and then I just can, you know, press one key or put it on a toolbar and I'll quickly have my automation cheat sheet right in front of me when I want it. And when I don't want it, I can just hide it. So in future episodes, I show you some other things you can do with the resources menu. You can also, you know, put effects chains on there. If there are some that you use very often, you can put track templates here. You can put entire projects in here to open with just double clicking as well as other media files and things like that. So, so we'll look at those in a little more detail in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon. I'm releasing this video today rather than the usual Monday because tomorrow we're going to have a live stream and this live stream is featuring my good friend Bo Denarius. I'm going to give him mixing feedback and after that he's going to show us a plugin he's been working on. So that should be a lot of fun and if there's a lot of y'all we can do a little bit of a chat, do some Q&A, just talk about Reaper or if you have any questions or anything bugging you I can try to answer your questions live. So it should be a lot of fun so please join me. The stream will be at 2 p.m. Eastern time so if you can make it it'll be lovely to see you take care and i'll see you tomorrow bye bye